same time, none of the other heroes really synergize with like the early push, aside from Shadow Demon. Bloodlust is going to be good Ready later on, team. but I'm not going to offer you too much for your Luna early to mid game. It's always nice, but really hits the stride once she's got the Glaze maxed and the, the full damage aura. And Team Tinker lacking a mid last, I suppose. Ten second, ten I think seconds. Ember's Remaining. pretty good here. They don't have that much physical damage, or they don't Five have seconds. yeah, they don't have that much physical damage. His uh, shield would be pretty good here. Very elusive Dyer, versus bat. Team. Um, that would kind of be like a what else? Beachy game. How did how did Panda get to last pick, last ban rather? It's not a hero that Fnatic have run with much success. We saw them try to run it for a rise. Oh, yeah, that, that was a disaster. That was miserable. I'm actually not sure. Tinker is one of the few European teams I have really not gotten a chance to see at all. I know they've been doing really well, but I'm not sure how much they run a brew. 10 <laughs> seconds remaining. Other options for Sing Sing? I mean, pretty much Five seconds anything, remaining. I suppose. They don't really have a good mid laner yet for Fnatic, Reserve so no time. counter picking in that sense, but um yeah, I don't really see anything that really stands out to me as a great pick for Tinker, just whatever suits their fancy, whatever Sing Sing wants to play pretty flexible mid you can also do Ogre, Ogre's decent here too or not Ogre, Meepo although mm. I haven't seen any team pick Meepo in a really long time yeah, Meepo's just gone dark. I, I, I saw one of the SEA teams run it randomly. But I think it might have been Arrow just mess like they pick Meepo for DDZ when they're just kind of messing around and eliminate it from tournaments. They never seem to run it in big Ten matches. Seconds remaining. Sing Sing Five hmm, what seconds they, they they are remaining. a bit light on the team fight. Alright, so they go for tight on it. That definitely team shores them up pick. in that front. It gives them a solution for the lasso as well. Last is going to be close to useless. You can crack and shell it off. You can double purge it off. You know, and there's a Lincoln Sphere builder here. We always we always say that <laughs> last is going to be useless, and then it it rare. Okay, well, that, that, that's, it sh in theory it should be useless. If it's not useless this game, that's because Fnatic played incredibly well. So a lot of the games that Fnatic recently lost, I actually think has been due to Arise not performing up to par on. His Death Prophet we saw yesterday, as well as his Brewmaster. His OD is actually really, really good. I would say probably his second best hero next to his Magnus. Mm -hmm. So this is a good pick for a Fnatic. And he's going to have an easy lane, unless the Skyrath Mage is just constantly dual laning him. They may even have to do. And they have Who's, who's going to beat an OD mid here? None of these heroes. Tide can do, like, okay. Weaver can also do, like, mediocre. But none of them will beat him. Or should come close to even on CS. And they also have like remaining. a dual invulnerable disrupt too. Very good versus uh, Mystic Flare Five as well as dual. Remaining. Very, very good. Both teams, well, fairly well rounded drafts. So you've got off laners that offer you some crowd control. You've got uh, dual core on each in the form of the Legion Commander and the Weaver for one side, the, the Luna and the OD for the other. But I'm looking forward to this mid game for Tinker. Uh, I haven't seen a successful Legion Commander in some time. I've, I've watched a lot, but haven't gotten to cast any, so I'm hoping that we get some here. Let's see, Saint Saint heading bottom now, introducing Team Tinker 3-0 and so far in the Summit 2. He'll be heading to the bottom lane, that puts EGM on your bat and joining him there as well. Koikfa, Hide Hunter with the boots first, Bulba on your Scarth Mage, and, well, the hands of Pycat will go the Legion Commander. On the Radiant side, Fnatic 2-3 and three in the Summit 2. They've been struggling as of late. Need to start putting wins on the border, they won't even have a shot at the playoffs. Ace. The offlane Batrider to the mid lane goes a rise. The D playing the support Shadow Demon will be Rise. Come with me, your Ogre Magi, and that leaves Hani as the safe lane farming Luna. And already a lot of aggression coming out from TT. I think of it as a team team because that, that was the first team that I knew by the acronym TT. <laughs> uh, that's definitely a repetitive name. Gonna, they didn't actually get any wards down, though. They just kind of jaunted towards the bottom. They saw Hani there, or, uh, yeah, Hani there, and, and just backed off. So that's another roll swap for Fnatic. They put Hani on... Well, he was playing the, the safe lane, I suppose, last game. But it was really more of, like, a ganker on the tiny going arcane boots, then into a blink. We've seen him playing support for this team. We've seen a rise going mid on tempo controllers like Brew. And now he's playing the, the OD mid. They're... They're kind of all over the place with their drafts, to be honest. The, one, the two consistent things have been Rise on support and Ace playing something that's tempo controller-esque in the offlane. But 
Outside of that, it's like you can flip a coin and you'll get something different every time here for Fnatic's drafts. Tinker doing something very different and not putting the Tide Hunter off lane, and that's fully what Fnatic expected using one of the Sentry Wars to block the Ancient spawn. Dead Quickville will be top. No Dire Wards here towards the bottom, but they have EGM on support, and they're going to go in with Sing Sing to start. Disruption's ready, there's an Aphotic Shield. If Come With Me tries to stun, he'll do so. Sing Sing will actually turn and go into Rise, but he's going to have to Sakuchi his way out of this. Takes a lot of harassment. Against this try lane, it, it does look like he's going to struggle early on. Already be forced to south. Pretty good for Team, uh, team Fnatic. Still, the wave is pushing. They should get some free experience and gold fairly soon. They're going to get some pulls going. Looks like Come With Me will try for it. Doesn't get the stack off in time, but... Uh, our mid lane, as expected, should be... That's here. Should be pretty favorable for the OD, but... Pycat's just going to sit back and, and spam overwhelming odds to get some last hits. Try not to get his mana stolen too much. Be reasonably successful at that. There was a Radiant Sentry Ward plopped down, so that makes life difficult for Sing Sing. Top lane, Ace. Bit of an easier time here. He's getting his levels. Bulbas harassed him a bit. Already hits level 3, and hasn't used up too much regen. Sitting on 3 Thangos. Pretty good versus Skyrath. Yeah, pretty good indeed. And, I mean, Koikpa can't really contribute that much to a kill, too. He has gone the more offensive build with zero points in Kraken Shell, but still, it's a bat rider with boots first and with Kalkshant recently nerfed. Not an easy kill. Bit of an engagement brewing here, bottom lane. Rice has a... Waiting for that two-minute rune. Unfortunately for him, it's a bounty rune, which is, is nice to get, but he'd love to set up this kill. They have detection for Sing Sing. Nothing doing. Rise might be in trouble now. Disrupts the Weaver. EGM just keeps on chopping him with that sword. He has a shield if he wants to tower dive. Sing Sing's gonna run his way out. They're actually gonna have to back off to protect him. Not one more Sakuchi will make his way out. A lot of action here, bottom lane. Now a loose and beam on EGM. They've even drawn Hani into this skirmish. EGM may have to Roche deny. He's trying to run up the hill. No shield for eight seconds. No stuns for Come With Me. Needs the body blocks. He's getting them. Loose and beam. Jams it in. Nice first blood there for Fnatic. Well played by Come With Me. That was some good body blocking. Deed Pycat getting very low in mid. Yeah, a lot of harassment from the OD. Arise, no follow up to finish that kill. Went for the Quelling Blade, now it's the bottle as well. So this will allow him to see us a bit more against your OD, and she does have decent base damage, but <laughs> end of the day, you still got 86 on Arise, not to mention the Astral timing to, to throw you off. Now, so Pycat will fall behind, but he gets his levels. That's the main thing here. Yeah, I mean, melee heroes with Quelling Blade are not a bad way to deal with OD. I remember people used to pick Lifestealer, just use Feast and Quelling Blade and just try and outlast hit him, and it's, it's all right. Yeah, and there's really no way the OD is going to kill you in, unless the support comes in with that particular matchup. And I'd say the same is pretty much true here for the Legion Commander. 70, 777 health, he's pretty durable. He can pick up his boots very soon if he wants to, and he's got decent base armor. Or she, I should say. He being pie cat. So let's see what build Hani goes for. He's sitting on a nice fat stack of gold, 1200. He could go an early Aquila to try and take this tower down. Also, Midas, fairly greedy, not really Luna style, but Hani does like his Midas. The Astral to set up mid, come with me, lumbers in, gets off the stun, and this will force out a teleport. Actually, that one gets canceled. So if they make a go mid again, there won't be any backup there for a little while. The Bulba just gonna be pulling. Fairly passive here, although at the bottom room, we might have a bit of a skirmish. Pycat, it's level 5. If he had his boots, could potentially chase come with me. At least try to harass him, but without that, just going to back off. Try to get that experience mid, and that bounty rune will have to, to make up for the, the OD denies. Arise doing very well in the lane. Eventually, he has a good OD. Already 12 denies, 24 CS. Good start for him. Yeah, it's like way better than the other heroes that I've seen, aside from Magnus. His Magnus was pretty good last game. He had, considering the, the matchup, a lot of nice two hero RPs, but there's just no follow up. He just stone gaze and it's all over. Bottom lane, come with me, taking decent harassment here from Sing Sing. Sing Sing also taking a lot of his own. With the Soul Catcher and EGM, he drops low, then heals Sing Sing to keep him alive. For now, he's okay. Man, they got lucky. If the Soul Catcher went on Sing Sing, I think they would have killed him with a Lucent Beam. Yeah, he lost like two thirds of his health even without it. And Team Tinker, uh, 
Things are going like okay for them. The landing phase isn't that bad. Kokva uh, probably saving it for a fast bling dagger too, so he's going to be a force to reckon with in a couple of minutes' time. And they have, they do have a re relatively snowbally lineup, and they also need to get a lot of kills on Legion Commander, and that's the only way she's going to catch up, which is this OD. Yeah, they don't really like the best set for a Legion, right? I mean, until until Pika gets blink, he's got to just basically run in. That's not the easiest thing to do. Tidehunter is close to his blink for Koikfa, and looks like he may rush it. So I suppose this will be your solution to the lack of other initiation. Concussive shot's not too great for that. Well, they can still, like, Sateroy Pycat with uh, Abaddon Shield as well as press the attack. So she, he's, yeah. uh... There's still Astral, though, right? Like, yeah, and Disruption. Yeah. Yes, there is. Oh, hey, look at me. I'm coming to duel you. No, you're not. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> They can they can keep Pycat off, but with the tide book that that could be irrelevant. Quick it does appear to be either rushing that or or maybe even mech, but this mono will be taxed if he goes that route. So. A lot of people are just saving their gold, just waiting to see how the game develops. Fani has gone for the Aquila Arise. Not sure if he's going for a four staff or a Midas first. Tide Hunter probably blink first, could go for a mech, so a lot of things up in the air. Oh, Hani, you are at way too far bottom lane. He did not expect this rotation to come in. Sakuchi going down in three. Another nuke from the sky. Disruptions there. But that's only going to allow Sing to set up surround him. Hani wound up going down. Nothing Ryze could have done to prevent that. Got a little too aggressive. No observe board bottom. Considering that, he was out pretty far. Indeed. And Ace halfway to his blink dagger. Koikva finally hitting level six. And things should start developing fairly shortly. They don't really want to give Luna the free farm, and she is just so vulnerable at this time. Level 5, 700 HP, no BKB, with one tower down. It's a very good time to just kill Hani a couple times, so that we have so much action with the double on this, on this patch, and that picks have struggled a bit in the mini stage, but they have a good defensive support. Oh, he, you see me trying to kill Arise, but come with me sitting right there. I can't. There's a lot of backup. Quick and Bulba are marching in. They've got the ass ready to go. Come with me. The stun available. Only the three. There's a full on your chef, and there will be a oh, grab it. No matter. They pull the rises, but they'll steal the damage. Freedom. Even if the Shadow Demon had been ready, it would have mattered. EGM also in danger. Bottom line, man. Forward to the loon. Shoot in a second. No losing B might just be enough to bring him down anyway. So, go for a kill there. It's an OG or a bad. And you do get some damage on the, the Legion. Got off the duel before that boat ended. They come with me at the right place at the wrong time, but they needed Shadow Demon there to disrupt. Um, I mean, that's still really yeah, difficult. Yeah. They're still blue ground. He might have just got stunned in the Yeah, he might have got stunned anyway. Yeah, it would have been. If, if he was like super proper positioning, maybe, but I mean, that's just not an easy to see coming, or sorry, King to prevent. I mean, they saw it coming. They saw the blink dagger on Tide Hunter. They saw him missing. What really can you do? Yeah, it kind of reminds me of how Chowie did to play for uh, for LG back in the day, where he had his blink and then he just held to another lane, immediately smoke and, and go for a kill. That, that's a very fast Tide Hunter blink. No, our cane boots picked up. Didn't go for anything else, just straight into the blink. You don't, you don't really expect Ravian Tide to have like end the game if you can have for like eight minutes. I think it's way better than the mech rush. Yeah, we saw the mech rush, but it was it was after arcane boots at least. Still, don't want to get in position to fight a lot of times. It's where you need another hero to initiate if you want to go that route. And Arise will be going for the Midas, and that was really well timed gank to slow that down. Still a decent Midas timing, but it could have been really fast. And Arise is still a leader in net worth, a lot of net worth, but in 54 CS. Close to the top of the charts, uh, there with the Luna. What is Luna gonna get? Is it gonna be double Midas? No, please, honey. Oh my goodness, we've seen a lot of Midas's lately from from Alliance. We saw we saw Ani go for Midas last game on the safe lane, Tiny. I think it's gonna be Midas. I get away with it though. Um, There's Eastern Pike now. Rabbit is cooling down at 25. Well, Weaver is a good tower diver. These heroes are aggressive for Tinker in the mid game. They have Bat Rider with Blink Dagger now, so that should be able to get some ganks, and Team Tinker doesn't have the strongest fight, man. I, I mean, I don't think it's the optimal generation. item, but maybe they could get it. Yeah. We all Midas, see. Midas for the Luna now delivered and, or picked up, rather. Pike has chases on the come with me, Tommy. He has a duel ready to go. He's gonna perk himself. But 
that off. Not really content with his opening there. Let's force out a teleport now. Big commitment for him. Rider smoked up, looking for a gank on top lane. Arise getting looped around him mid. Uh, Blink Rabbit's a full straight onto Arise. The silence from Skyrim. Hearing that kill. Arise, he's just got too many places to be. He's got to be top, so he teleports there. But then they go mid instead. He's just being outmaneuvered now. There's only so much one Shadow Demon can do. With the double Midases, these other heroes can't really offer too much assistance. They tried to make a go top on Saint Saint, who's gone for a Midas of his own. They can't jump him in time. He's able to secutuate a safety. Tinker won't pressure this tower too much. I just want to point out, they did a good job giving EGM his fairly reasonable time in level attack. 6. Let him have the mid farm for a couple levels. Or a couple Dive minutes, I should say. Got his ultimate now, and much more difficult to deal with in the fights. No doom to remove that bar, that bar of time. I bet Hani's like, well, they can only ravage one of us. So we're gonna get value out of the Midas. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's one that's one school of thought. The other is that all these heroes can tower dive and kill you. Koiko has been very active though. Every time Ravage is up, boom, smoke, get a kill, or just not smoke and get a kill. And Fnatic have not been really able to react appropriately or just get a successful gank with the Bat Rider yet. Um, at the same time, Sing Sing is farming away to generally not Weaver's strength, but. I don't know, will he be able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Aluna and or a OD late game? Probably not. I guess maybe with Legion Commander's help, but Legion is a little under farm. Yeah, only has the one duel so far. Not getting a ton of damage. Needs that Blink Dagger for Pycat, but this ain't gonna help. Gets lassoed, pulled back into Arise. The OD ult's ready to go. More heroes teleporting in. Silence onto Arise, though. Mystic Flare. And then the duel to turn this one around, but the defensive disruption. Quick foot blinking in, gets the anchor smash off. Doesn't win the duel, but does survive and gets the kill. Quick for now, taking it into Clips. Wind up going down. It's a double for Hani. It's a drive by from the Luna mid lane. Vroom, vroom. The cure's a big one. Very nice defensive disrupt by Rise there. That allowed the OD to get his ultimate off, and then that was enough damage for Hani to clean up. Well, match command is now for Hani, and it's gonna be kind of that eternal envy approach to the Luna, where you just try to outmaneuver them, split push, and you die occasionally perhaps, but you just constantly keep the lanes in, and that creates space for your OD, it lets your supports roam around. It does increase your farm speed a lot, if you're left unchecked. Ogre has gone for the one or it was a 1-3-1, now a 2-3-1. With the buffs of multicast, I think getting Fire Blast early is a lot better. Ignite does more damage, uh, point for point. But still, you pick him for the multicast, not for the multicast Ignites. <laughs> yeah, if you want spread damage, it would feel... It seems like there might be other supports that offer that. Hani. rut -row. He's got the Mask of Madness cooling down. Can he just run away in time? No, not against... Oh, that's not gonna help. Ravage the fly, Rise dodges it, but before he can even walk back in to disrupt, Hani's already dead, and he's gonna pay for it with his own life. I mean, he he moved through that perfectly as a Shadow Demon, just dodging around. Doesn't matter, still bad. He needs, like, a Blink or a Force. They have to be better prepared for Koikva's timing. It, I mean, he's somewhat predictable. Every time Ravage is up, they smoke and get a kill, but at the same time, Fnatic's just falling for it every time. It's like, hey, let's just farm, you know, way far away from our tower. Uh, Sing Sing's so. in trouble here. Lasso calls back in. The Ogre and Bat combined. They score kill there on the Weaver, who had something coming on... No, actually, no, maybe it didn't. Fire's middle tower is under attack. Radiance oh. bottom tower oh. is under attack. Oh, he's attack. only got 43 CS. Yeah, he's pretty poor. I feel like he should have more attack. farm for the Midas, but... Honey, even dying twice is still 6,200 on net worth. He is massive. He's 2.5k up on the on the enemy Weaver. That is their Radiance one position. Tinker's so utility attack. cores doing well with the, the tide... The tide region, Dyer's but they're not going to carry the soul of late game. Maybe, I... maybe a refresher tide can do it. At some point, though, you will want farm on on Weaver. Pikett's all by his lonesome. He does have blink and tread, so some sort of damage on his own. My one, th the one thing that I do worry about with that Mask of Madness is if they don't disrupt their Astral, then Radiant's Pikett is just going to wreck him with the duel. Like you imagine Blade Mail while he's Mask of Madness going on you, and Legion will shred the Luna new one. They'll find Rise here mid lane. Gosh, bring him down. Winner for Pikett. Nice Legion play. Just knows, yeah, I don't really need it for the lockdown. I just want to get damage, so the last second duel to secure that. Fnatic just seems like they don't care about dying. It's like, well, we are going to incur casualties, but we will outfarm it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a strange way to approach uh, mass ganks. Kind of, kind of reminds me of Alliance a little bit. It's like, 
We know we might lose the landing stage, and we might not be able to take fights, but we're just going to split push you to death. Fnatic, I think they could take fights if they, you know, go for, like, the early Luna BKB and want to, but... This has definitely been effective for them so far. The Luna's up to 7k net worth. Pushes in the top lane, forces rotation, has the level 2 ultimate now, tower. In deny range, they're gonna multicast and go for the tower last hit. It goes to Leopani, he's got Eclipse ready to go. They gotta be careful about this engagement, Pycat, trying to purge himself. And then the Eclipse banded out, he blinks out just in the nick of time. That's where the damage can come through from that demonic purge. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's a level 2 Eclipse down the drain. That's a big deal. Yeah, Ravage is all also up. This is a great time for Tinker to fight. Oh, they're still gonna try to jump in mid, but EGM has this borrowed time ready. While that was happening, they lost their OD in the bottom lane. The Skywrath and Legion combined. EGM looking to be in trouble, though. Chased out by Come With Me and Ace, and we'll end up going down. The Blink 4 from Pycat gets off the door. Oh, more damage into Pycat. Plus 38 now. It's starting to stack up. That's almost double his base damage from duels alone. Yeah, while that was happening, they lost their OD bottom. I guess it wasn't a duel, just a just a Mystic Flare. Because he had it ready to go mid. Gonna chase Rise now. It's moving quickly with the Haster, and they can jump in pretty far. Quakefa, a Ravage though. Used early, so they're gonna back off. Man, poor Rise, 0, 4, and 2. He had a great Midas timing at around Radiant 9 minutes time, but still just has not really made too much Radiant headway on his force up, and he really needs that so he can escape Tidehunter, so he can push people out of Mystic Flare, and just has not been happening. But yeah, he's still he's more farmed than Sing Sing. Step. Yeah, that's the funny thing is, it looks like, oh, oh my god, they're feeding on this OD Luna. And the OD is still right there with the Tidehunter Legion. Yeah, Midas is the reason, but... Considering that your OD's 0 and 4 to be even, that's pretty good. 95 CS would explain it, and Hani, who's 5 and 3, is, is he's still on top of the net worth chart. But my, my worry, Ben, is is when Tinkers start going for these more aggressive fights. When we see them group up as 3 or 4. Well, they just need BKBs, yeah. right, right, on Luna and OD. And they then... gotta find the space to farm them. Gear 1 mid is... It's healthy for now, but Glyph is down. Actually, you look at Tinker, they don't—they really don't push very well. That is kind of an issue with them. Their lineup doesn't really allow for it, and also the way they play doesn't really allow for it either. Sing Thing's usually trying to accrue some gold on his own, and then Koikva and Pycat are uh, very aggressive in ganking, and yeah, they just don't have anything versus towers. Press the attack. <laughs> 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 yeah. Not gonna cut it. And pushing into a bat rider is just usually a terrible idea, as well as pushing into eclipse. Yeah, and we haven't. We also, to be fair to Fnatic, haven't really seen them execute perfectly yet. If they're able to get off the defensive disruptions, the defensive astrals to dodge a ravage to protect a hero that's being dueled, they're executing the right click on creeps properly. <laughs> that's what they need. Yeah, that's that's step one. Step two will be the spells. But it like say the Shadow Demon gets a four staff or something. Then then this really gets a lot easier for them. That, to that that is, that's not gonna happen anytime soon. Uh I guess it's wishful thinking. Ice does walk right by a dire observer ward here. What do you think Clickfoot does here? Does he just go straight refresher? He's already got the arcane boots, or or do you even look towards a mech? I would say pipe is really good versus fanatics lineup. Depends on how poor Abaddon is, and he's getting pretty poor. And it also depends on where they want to, when they want to take the fights in the game. They could also go flats and do Roshan very early, um, so that's not a bad idea. You know, refresh is much better for like 30, maybe like 40 plus minutes in, and Pipe is much better for like 25 to 35. And I think Fnatic's actually gonna get really strong around like 30, 35 too. Yeah, like you mentioned, when they get the BKBs, when Batrider maybe completes his BOTs or even his own BKB for three of them, there's no so there's no there is no solution for the for the lasso, but that's only assuming you're in position. And as we've seen time and again, being in position against Batrider is never easy, no matter how well your supports are playing. They did get a force on Quake for though. But he doesn't rush the refresher, doesn't go for the pipe. More mobility for him, so they can get these jumps and come with me. Will be the target. Pycat searching for a duel. He's gonna get it off. And then runs back in, Mystic Flare securing that one. Plus 52 damage for Pycat. Tinker invested a lot in getting this Legion his early kills, but he's now the second in terms of net worth, and maybe he's their maybe he's their real one position. Saint Saint has so far just been farming, still way down in the net worth charts.
Yeah, they've been playing very well around PyCat, and PyCat has just been looking for any weakness in Fnatic's positioning, and they have a lot, considering how greedily they're playing. I love the way he's using duels. I've seen a few teams run Legion where they, they like, the Legion reserves it to just lock a hero down, but Radiance to keep the Legion kind of relevant later on, you need to steal damage. Even using it when a hero's about to die anyway, it's a good way to pad your stats, and the Legion stat padding is relevant. We're gonna push in mid now, everybody grouped up. Fnatic gonna let that Radiant tower fall, no trade, really, yeah, they're trying to move the Batrider in top to make pre equilibrium work in their favor, and this time Tinker will de-ward, no tier 1's left, they go for a Roche, thinking about it. Tinker finally overtaking the gold charts, oh, it's a fake back with a smoke. Uh-oh, that sentry ward, just ensuring there's no vision here, Fnatic may have never saw everyone go missing, just assume they're either roaching. uh, or they're, they're pushing in the bottom lane, because they are showing the Weaver there. But neither is the case. They're kind of trying to confuse Fnatic, and this could be very effective. Actually, Fnatic kind of uh, thinks it's coming, though. They pinged around the T2 on bottom, and they also pinged right around the Ancients, too. So they they think they actually smoked and went either top or bottom instead of going to Roshan. I think Roshan's the much easier play for them. They're not a very good Rosh lineup, though, Tinker. They have Gush minus armor, but... That's pretty much it. They have a lot of sustain, though. They can they can it do it. It just takes forever. Yeah, they don't have that much right click. They need a medallion, but I guess no one really can get it. Maybe maybe, maybe Abaddon or something. They might get a duel off here, though. Arise, don't show yourself near that creep wave. The unpause comes through. Oh, he's dead. Duel's here. There's nothing to back him up. They do have the Rise walking in, but too late. Another winner as Pycat improves to 66 stolen damage. That's a sacred relic. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. This is getting to be a bit of a problem. Mask of Madness loot. I mean, I suppose if it goes late enough, Hani can always trade this out. But you're not gonna be able to. You're not gonna be able to win a man fight against Legion with this amount of damage. Not with that that bonus incoming that you take. Still, he's just gonna farm all around the map attack. though. Like his net worth is just gonna keep accelerating with the BOTs and with the Dyer's with the uh, Midas. Under BKB will be Pycat's next choice. Doesn't really solve too many problems though. There's still the defensive Afro and disruption. There's still the lasso, but uh, and the purge as well. But they're gonna go in on ace now. Top lane, the okay. shot will hit him. Pycat searching. The ravage comes through. That connects on Hani. He goes down immediately. There's a duel ready for Pycat. Is he gonna use it on comes to be four step? That sets up the duel. Will we get enough proxy. Will more damage. <laughs> Eighty now. Oh my goodness. This Legion commander is a well decorated war veteran already. 2-0 and 5. Blink Ravage, too strong. Yeah. Very nice 4 staff, too. Onto the Legion Commander. Koikva has just been dominating Fnatic, though. As well as Bulba. Those uh, those two players have just been putting pressure on every single one of Fnatic's heroes. Yeah, I'm talking a lot about Pinecat because he's the one basically getting fed damage, but really the team setting him up for the most part. The Ravages from Koikva, the good off uh, offensive 4 staff play there, the Mystic Flares from Bulba. They've been... Their entire game plan has largely just been 4 protect 1 with... It's kind of a, a 3 help 1 who then the rest of them protect the other one strat. Where they're, it's not just that they're getting kills and creating space for the Weaver, but they're also feeding what could be their main carry or at least secondary carry, Lake him. Pretty cool way to play it. Weaver's finally catching up. Is number 3 in terms of net worth and Arise has just fallen even behind Koikva at this point. Number 6. Not quick, but if he wants to go refresher next, he's up to 1700 gold. Has the first first major component of that pretty much ready. BKB not secured on Pycat. Allow him to go toe to toe with anyone in this game. OD won't really be able to offer much. He should have a BKB by this point. He should have Treads, Bottle, Midas, Four Seven, and BKB. BOD, you mean? Yeah, he he Double just damage. hasn't. Gone he's only five. Yeah. CS is still good. He's still leading the Weaver. That's actually pretty impressive to have kept the CS up, but he's just been the the object of much hate from Tinker. Oh, Rosh now. They have their Linkage Sphere on Saint Saint. They're going to throw that. Or no. They, that. Oh, that's the, uh, that's the Abaddon Shield. Looks a lot like a Linkage Sphere. But they have his Linkage Sphere soon. I'll take the Rosh in for now. Pycat's going to claim it. He can get really aggressive with his Blink and Duels and have a second life to recover if things don't go his way. Also protects his... Hard earned damage bonus. And now the BKBs are actually kicking in for Team Tinker, not for Fnatic, who I think it's much more needed for. And with LC being that farmed, I don't know. 
PKB doesn't help you split push too much. Still, they have blink initiates. Oh no, they're so going to that. They want to pop the Aegis, but Ravage is ready. Koikfa in position. Dual Tani steals his damage, looks for the ace kill as well. Plus one, plus 94 already. He's nearing the three digit point. Face anyone more down here, come with me. Multicast will secure the Aegis. That's gone now, but the lose come with me as well. So it's a, a two for one. If you want to count the Aegis as the one, but no gold in their pockets. Costly deaths here, and Luna's not even ahead anymore, Ben. After that latest fight, on top will be your Legion. SD. And they're not done yet. They're searching for Rise bottom lane. Saint Saint trying to chase him in. Rise does have a defensive disrupt. Very difficult to get a kill with only those two. Quake for Ravages, though. Every time that they jump, he gets two, three heroes. There's no defensive disruption or Astral. They just get free kills. Yeah, no BKBs, I think, is the, the biggest part. Luna just gets destroyed. Maybe they could have used Eclipse to kill him before um, before the Ravage, but still, he would have just chased anyway. him. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, I mean, that's just way worse than they expected the fight to turn out. Yeah, I'm now getting a little confident here, pushing the middle lane. He's going for the Ags on a bad end. I actually haven't seen this in play. Have you Have you seen it? I think it's Onage, but as... Most damage mitigation spells go is very difficult to see in a teamfight. Uh, how, just how effective it is, similar with Crimson Guard, but it's very, very good on paper. Okay, looking forward to it. Pycat, BKB, now charging in. He's got a Blink Dagger ready. Quakefa will get the gush off and arise. He does have a defense faster, but he was silenced. Unable to do anything. Bulbug managed to get that. Oh, no, that wasn't Bulbug. Yeah, Rise one is going down now. Okay, they're just falling apart now. The pick, the, the initiation from... From Taker has just been too good. The Blink Daggers on Koikfa, as well as Pycat. Every time they jump in, they're just unable to do anything. Yeah, it was going okay when Fnatic's T1s were up, because the amount of space that Team Tinker could uh, maneuver was just very limited. But now that the T1s are down, they can just gank anywhere. I mean, come with me, he's about to die. Oh. They tried to force step come with me up the hill. <laughs> Boba will silence the creep. That's a very cheeky attempt. Not, ex not successful. That was cool. Haven't seen that. I do. That's one cool thing about Tigers. I feel like they're one of those teams that, Radiant's similar to what we saw. Do you remember that Cloud9 game at MLG where they were, they did like the triple four staff initiation Radiant's against DK? I feel like Tigers exhibit some of that, where they're like thinking outside the box and a little bit beyond your standard solid Dota. Sometimes it doesn't work out, but cool to see that kind of next level Double decision making. Damage. And like the test of faith. Blink in with Tinker. Yeah, yeah, that, that type of thing. Or the, you know, the, sun, the, the fountain hooks. <laughs> it, was, it might have been reviled at the time, but certainly an unusual way to play. 108 damage on the Legion, though. He's hitting for about 250. The Luna is hitting for 150. One of the more cheeky things I've seen was a Tinker uh, in 6.81. He just got really, really fat, and they had a Kunkka on their team. All the Kunkka would do is sit at Fountain and X him. <laughs> and that's literally all he did for the last 10 minutes of the game. And it, they, they really couldn't do anything worse them. Huh. He just he just TPs, blinks. Unless you can kill him in, like, that half second or whatever. I mean, I mean you, you he's just sitting there waiting to press a return if he's in any sort of danger. Yeah. Like, he... I was like, well, what can you do versus him? Well, I mean, you have to, like, let the team Obviously get Obviously, you have fast. a hero city at base. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, Still. Is, that is the one downside. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> it's like the Crystal Maiden strategy of before. If it works, it works. Well, the the split push isn't coming as fast anymore. That's the other thing. We don't see the Luna. For a while, we saw Hani just occupying these two camps, pushing in the wave around here, but now more restricted. Sitting back in his own woods, he's farming the jungle. He is farming that jungle quickly. Picks up the ultimate orb. It's, the item progression is still there, but it's not. There's no pressure on the map, which means Tinker want to start forcing the issue. They can do that soon. They set up here for the Weaver bottom lane. Sing Sing is pretty far out. Yeah, Legion is just fat now. Number one on net worth has the AC, or sorry, will have the AC relatively soon. 108 damage on duel. Sing Sing. Even if he goes down, this is a five-hero gank to kill him. He hides in the trees. Hani's going to search for him. He doesn't walk in that one spot where Saint Saint is. They throw the Shadow Poison. He's going to run through their entire team. Where's the detection? They have a gem actually on Ace. But Ace isn't in range for this. And now they'll catch out the Weaver. Saint Saint get a time lapse and try to retreat out. Still caught in the same place, though. 
Alex continues to squish you, but they've got a refresh already on Koikpa. Watch out! Tidehunter is going to get aggressive here in a second. Looking for the jump in. They win a duel to start. They look for the ace follow-up kill. He's able to retreat. Two dead with, with double Ravage still online. No Weaver down. 19 to 7, your score. Forget about the grass, though. Tinker are just in own mode. When's the last time Fnatic got a kill? You can tell from the graph. It was... 16 minutes or so? There have been, let's see, 1, no, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 unanswered kills, it looks like. Well, it was the, it was the Abaddon kill that was so long ago. Man. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's like that was another a, game. That was a really long time ago. Dyer's top tower is under attack. in danger here. Blink Dagger's cooling down. He's gonna have to cancel this Blink from Pycat. Five seconds to go. The Lucent Beam will come through. Boots are traveling for your Batrider. Pyka, does he get off the duel in time? Now he gets last, so pulled back into an Eclipse, but Koikpa's ready. Ravage number one will fly. Now they get the duel off. Ravage number two will connect, and Pycat makes short work of that first hero. He's gonna look for the second Blink under Orion. Has the Ogilter, and will manage to bring him down, but doesn't bring down Pycat. A three for one exchange for two Ravages, and up to 144 friggin' damage. I think we're just, he's just getting started. And gem down. Once Legion gets this much, this much stolen, like, you just can't stop him from getting more. Every fight, he's pretty much guaranteed to win a duel. As long as he uses it at the right time. And the eggs. A good old EGM. <laughs> I think EGM hasn't had to do anything in this game. After the laning, the laning stage obviously Cryer's does his job, but, you know, all a Baden really does is throw a shield on Legion when he runs in. He's not really for being forced to play defense. It's an EGM dream game. Oh, here we go. More duel. Easy duel. More damage. Oh. Price will give it up to 162. Keep that counter rolling. Well, Yeah, I think that sums this game up. Welp. Not sure what you do now if you're a fanatic. Can't split push because the Legion keeps on killing you and stealing your damage. Can't really fight at all. You'd be very cheeky with Manta on Luna. Try to bait out a spell or something. And just split push and be elusive and play it like an illusion hero. I think that's their best shot of uh, trying to come back in this game because they can't fight the Legion. Not head on. Can't ignore Pyga for long either though. He's got an AC. This means the buildings will start to drop. Come with me. Caught out on the high ground. Does have a Yule Scepter. But Pycat says, let's force this man, let's rumble. Be able to get in range there. He'll retreat out as Tanker Group up mid and Sing State, who's quietly been farmed. Okay, that space was created. That's a Desolator I see. You see that tower just yeah. get demolished? That's without the DD on Legion, too. Desolator AC plus. What is that? 315 damage or 318 damage, something like that? Yeah. Look at that. It's just Dyson. Okay. Yeah, Fnatic, your base is dropping. The glyph. They can't put push in time. They really can't fight into this Legion Commander. 448 damage on him currently. Disgustingly fat. He's basically a tiny at 32 minutes. And then some. He'll bring down the building there. He'll head straight towards bottom. One lane of Rax already just wiped off the face of the map. They multicast it's a 1x. Not gonna be nearly sufficient. I got looks for more. Meanwhile, they lose the Bat Rider in the middle lane. He was trying to go for a back step. That ain't gonna happen. Come duel, says Pycat. The disruption will prevent the winner, but won't prevent the kill. As Pycat fights his way out, EGM popping his ultimate, keeping his team healthy during this time with that Agate Scepter. Tanker crushing face as Ace buys back, may die again if Koiko wants to dive him. Pycat finds yet another kill on the other side of the fight, and they take out two lanes of Rax, still yet to lose a hero. That Ags is pretty owned. Yeah, Baden. Baden Ags did a lot of work. <laughs> Nobody was dropping in that fight. 35%? Yeah. Dyer's bottom tower is that under help. attack. Really good versus uh, Luna Eclipse. Well, they don't need a pipe if they have that. Not to mention, yeah, it is, basically is. It's like a super pipe. <laughs> the other thing is that the Legion heal really helps keep Pike out in the fight as well. A couple hundred points for him. And now he's just going to try to solo rush. He might not quite be able to do this, but he'll have EGM support. Throws out the shield, the heal, and of course the... The, the Frostborn. Yeah, and the Frostborn. Oh, Curse of Adam, as, as, it, as it may be. I don't think we're allowed to call it that anymore. Yeah. Violating some, well, some we, Blizzard. We are. Dota's not. Might get Valve in trouble, though. Oh. Okay. 
They're gonna lose ace too. Like, blink. Yeah, there's no blink dagger available. Oh no, not blinking. My guy was busy shopping or something. By the way, Sing Sing finds the solo kill. Desperate. He's close to rapier territory. In terms of damage. He is. He is closing in. And blinking forward is Koikfa. Double. Double Ravage not up, he's only got the one. But that should be enough as... Arise, once again, gives up his damage. A sacrifice on the altar of Tinker. I'm looking for more kills here. Ani does have a TP... No, actually no boots to travel for, for 15. He's gonna have to run the hell away. He's got a Mask of Madness ready to go. Continues to circle, but this only buys time. Ani, no, not that direction! That's the wrong way to go. My gratitude. Bulba is beyond godlike. Oh, man. Yeah, this just got out of hand really quickly. The double Midas, Mask of Madness, Luna. Was it just too greedy? Well, they tried they... to play keep away, but Tinker just, you can't, it seems you can't do that very easily against this Legion Tide. Quite well, movements never were on point. Pushed out to, when the Legion Commander was still relatively weak. Um, they, they never took a good 5 on 5 when they have like Eclipse plus Astral and they didn't really protect the OD at all. So a lot of things just didn't happen for Fnatic. Their early first 10 minutes was pretty good though. EGM with the, the manor tanking of the tier 3 while the tier 2 still being sieged out. Now they break high ground. Pycat chopping wood. Looking for an ogre here. The <laughs> Yule Scepter used twice. By, one by each team I believe. And then winner. Plus 200 damage, essentially, for for Pike out of the stage. Can he actually break it? No, he's at 198. They're going to force staff for Ryzen. Actually, force staff himself is. All right. Well, that's one way to give up your life. GG. Fanatic, go out in, in style. Why does he always Why disconnect? the pause? It's the disconnect. The Ryzen pause? Yeah. Yeah. The, the manner, manner disconnect. <laughs> Someone will have mercy on us. It's come with me. But the struggle continues now. Team Fnatic, they started off 2-0 and in the Summit 2, and now, Ben, as they face some of the, the tougher, more established teams, they are 2-4. and four. Tinker improving to 4-0, oh, undefeated. To be fair, they look better than they did yesterday. Fnatic. That's true. And the day before. But, well, still, still trying to find that rhythm. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're really struggling. They would not be doing well if this was Guitar Hero. Let's see, what do we have next on the list?